Hey friends! In this video, we're going to paint a classic autumn flower, the chrysanthemum. I especially love spider mums that have their beautiful, long, curving petals that kind of fall open really elegantly. So that's what we're going to paint. And it's going to have a little texture, a little extra autumn color, and I'm really excited about it. All right, let's paint! Hey, we're going to walk through painting a chrysanthemum today. I am excited to paint these because there's so many beautiful varieties and the one I love best is the more sort of spidery shaped one. I'm going to show you an inspiration photo I just found on Pinterest. Pinterest is my favorite place for finding flower photos because there's such a variety and I don't ever copy one photo um, in all of its detail or composition. I think that's important as an artist to come up with my own composition and kind of use my own creativity in that way. But I love looking for reference for flower shapes. So I really like this photo because there's ones you can see from the side, ones you can see from the front, and then more in the bud form. So I think what I'm gonna do is use more of a side view here for this um, kind of bottom corner area and then probably use a bud up in here. So I would recommend as you're painting, go ahead and hop on Pinterest and find some inspiration photos that you can have up while you're painting because I'm not gonna have this image side by side the whole time, but this is kind of what I'm looking at and the, the general idea I'm working from. So I'm gonna prep my canvas first. So I just have a small, I think this is like a six, no, this is like an eight by eight canvas. So what I've done already is I have painted a layer of gesso with kind of a large bristly brush and just done some sweeping movements and let it dry. And now it has a really nice texture to it, you can see. And I love that underpainting for um, my canvases. So I'm gonna use my catalyst wedge and prep the background. I like painting my canvases a solid color just so it's not white at the very beginning. So I'm putting out phthalo green and probably some ultramarine blue. This is kind of a go-to mixture that I have for a nice dark background that can really set off the um, lighter colors and the warmer colors of the flower. So I'm getting some of both of those. And as I scrape it along, you can just see the, the beautiful texture of the canvas shows up and we're getting a nice ground um, to work on that is not plain white. I'm not a fan of white backgrounds. <laughs> I don't really like how it shows through when you get on um, onto the main motif of your painting. I don't really like how the the white just kind of can peek through all the little in-between points. I like having a color all the way across because then it helps the painting look more um, cohesive because there's this sort of color all the way through, threading through the painting. Okay. So I'm using my catalyst wedge tool for this and I'll have all the supplies linked in um, the description so that you can see exactly what I'm using. Okay, so I'm gonna blow dry this and then we will move on. Now I'm gonna use my smaller round brush to do a quick sketch just to help the composition, help me think through the composition of the painting. So I'm gonna put out some white, and just mix a lighter color with it and some of my phthalo green, a little water. I like adding some water to help the flow of the paint come off of my brush a little easier, especially when I'm sketching. Okay, so I really love that side view. I'll show you one more time. It's this one right here this sort of bigger side view where it's much more opened up. And then I love that bud. So I'm gonna do the side view over here and really quickly, this is a small canvas. And I'm gonna do my best to be kind of loose and expressive and just try to get the general direction basically of the petals. There's kind of a shorter 
more foreshortened sort of look right there. And then these ones come down. There's a couple layers that is so lovely in kind of a direction like that. And I think the challenge I can already <laughs> I could already tell what's going to challenge me in this one is um, leaving some space so if you can see there's like gaps in between the petals that helps it have this really full but kind of light and airy look and leaving those spaces I think is going to be hard for me because I tend to want to fill everything up really full and um, I'm going to need to keep that in mind. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the little buds. So all of the petals, it's sort of like in a, this ball shape. So the petals are all folding sort of around the ball shape. And then they're coming around the far side right there. And then there's a couple more open ones. along this back edge and um, because I love just tucking in leaves wherever they don't it doesn't really have to make sense I just like filling in the space with leaves so I am probably gonna do some of the leaves like mm, probably go with an upward movement so probably a couple like right along here the chrysanthemums have really kind of interesting like jagged more like jaggedy edge leaves so we'll see how that works out okay here we go so I'm gonna rinse out my brush here and let's move on to the first color in our flower so I think I'm gonna use I'm gonna go for a magenta I'm gonna get out some more white Okay, and now I'm gonna move on to my my filbert brush here. That's the hog's hair bristle brush. It's much stiffer, and I love laying down really soft textural layers with it. So we're gonna see how that's gonna turn out on these. I'm excited. I haven't um, I haven't painted a chrysanthemum in a long time, so this is gonna be fun. Okay, so I'm gonna just start kind of with this top layer. And I'm just sort of using the side of the brush, I'm just dragging it and hinting at these petals. Some of them I can do shorter strokes where I'm more just see seeing sort of the, um, the tips of the petals. need to make more pink. And this is sort of just a medium color. I'm going to add some darker, darker values and probably, definitely, <laughs> some lighter values as we move on. But I kind of like starting with a medium so that sort of is just my grounding base layer and then I can kind of work out the range from there range of values. And there's some definitely like thicker petals that are bigger and on the bottom so I'm pressing down a little bit more with my brush to get it to fan out and create a bigger stroke. And then for the thinner ones I'm turning it more on the side and pressing down a lot lighter to get those thinner strokes. There's some short ones. Okay, and then there's like a space. So I'm gonna to try to leave space there. Something I er learned early on in my painting education was when there is in your subject 
like hundreds of something like whiskers on an animal or dots on in some sort of texture or like petals on a flower. You don't want to try to paint all 100 of them. You want to paint like 10 to represent the 100. So that's a really good thing to keep in mind when you're painting a flower like this is that there is so many more flower petals layered in here in real life, but I'm just approximating and our eyes fill in all of those other details. Like we understand that a flower has a ton of petals. Our minds know that. We don't need to see a hundred petals on the painting like we do in a photo. So at, we have to use our artistic creativity, our artistic license to sort of abbreviate that. And it looks a lot more pleasing. Like it looks too much. It's too overdone when you try to paint that many as there is in a photo. So just a reminder for that. Okay, I'm just gonna have a couple little ones sticking up at the back there. There, I think that's a really nice beginning. So while the pink dries, I think I'm gonna go ahead and do my beginning of the green leaves. And I already decided I don't really like the way that I pointed that one. So I think I'm going to change the direction, but I barely sketched it out, so it's not a big deal. All right, let's see. I think I'm gonna use some yellow, yellow ochre and some cadmium yellow, if I can get this open, this bottle, there we go. So there's my yellow ochre and my cadmium yellow medium. Okay, and then I'm gonna just create a mixture of these with some of my green. Now, phthalo green is super strong, so you only need a little bit when you're mixing a yellow green or else it'll just completely take over. Ooh, I really like this sort of chartreuse color. So let's try this. Um, I use my creative license <laughs> that keeps coming up, I feel like, to do whatever sort of colors in flowers and leaves that I want. I don't feel really bound to copy things naturalistically. So, um, I love coming up with fun color combinations and that's part of the excitement of figuring out what a painting is going to look like in the end for me. I kind of follow the process of the painting and just keep layering colors until I like it and it's pleasing to me. So I end up doing a lot of crazy colors usually in the petals, which I think is fun. Keeps it interesting. Okay. Now, the thing I'm trying to think through is chrysanthemum leaves have like sort of a jagged edge, but I don't want them to look quite as shaggy as all of the flower petals. So I think I'm actually going to kind of smooth them out because I feel like that's almost distracting from what's going on with the flower petals. I'll make a slightly darker version. Whoop, a little bit of the red got it, or the magenta got in there. Kind of made like an olive green color. Mm, I'll just kind of layer a few little touches of this. In the backgrounds, I often like to have um, some darker, kind of uh, darker colors that recede into the background to create depth and then also um, lighter colors that kind of pull forward as highlights. There. We're just going to keep this painting really simple. I'm not going to try to pack a ton of detail into it because I think it's going to just be a quicker tutorial that's a little bit simpler. And it's just a little canvas, so I like that having it a little bit a little bit of a simpler painting. So now I'm gonna blow dry so that we can just set this whole layer and then start on some of the highlights. Okay, I think that's dried enough. So now I'm going to 
do some highlights. The dark background color is acting like kind of like the shadow area of a lot of these sections of the flower and I like that. I'm, I'll probably come back with um, a darker pink and kind of fill in or maybe a different color that's dark but for now I think that's reading really well as the shadow so I'm going to move on to a highlight color. And in the photo, I'll kind of show you here again, um, these outer petals are a lot lighter and these inner ones are darker. So I'm gonna kind of go with that. I'm gonna emphasize the lightness of these outer petals. Kind of start at the tip of each one and just stroke this light color onto them and it really makes them pop out, doesn't it? And as I'm doing this, I might add an extra petal here or there, but I'm trying not to create a whole bunch of new petals because then we'll get into that like looking too busy, too crazy, too much. And I'm trying to just keep it at the tip of each petal and let the part where it connects in with the flower stay that medium color so that it looks like the shadow as it goes deeper in. Okay, so I think I'm gonna make this color just a little bit darker. I'm trying to aim in between, in between this medium and this light, get something in between for the highlights in this upper part. So let me get some more white out here. Let's try that. Okay, and I'm just gonna really emphasize just the tips. Cool, I like that. Okay, so now I'm going to use the same color and go in and do the same sort of highlighting on the bud. I think I'll probably come back and do a lighter pink once this has dried for a few little brightening touches here and there, but this is a good, a good layer for now. There. Okay. I think I'm going to put in a little bit of dark. And I'll just use my straight up magenta. And it always amazes me how adding in a shadow value, a really nice dark color, just helps your painting look so well rounded. Um, this has a really nice dark color already. So we have a, a pretty good value range from really dark to really light. But um, if, you, if you don't have that, your painting can look very flat and it's hard sometimes to understand that until you see it and you put the dark in and then you go, oh my goodness, there it is. Let's see. This is pretty dark. So I'm just, and I wanna overwhelm my painting with too much of this. So I'm just gonna go a little bit, just some tiny strokes with the tip of my brush in between where that green is but I like the green so I don't want to cover it all up so I'm just going to do it here and there 
try not to overdo it. In some places where the petals really curve, I can kind of go along the bottom of the curve where a shadow would be, and that looks really nice. And some of the areas may be, hmm, I'm not sure if I like that. <laughs> I was gonna say some of the areas where that light green that I sketched with is showing, I could go over it with the shadow color. Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to the bud. Just sort of at the bottom of these petals as they kind of curve around. And I'm gonna do just a little bit, kind of try to warm up the center of the flower because it's a bunch of little folded up petals inside. So I'm gonna just kind of hint at that there. I think it got a little too dark right there. So I'm gonna come back with some more of the light color, the light pink, and lighten that up a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna make this lighter pink again. And that dark pink is still wet, so I can really only do one stroke and then go back and get more, or else I'll, if I keep stroking, it'll muddy the color because the light and the dark will start blending. There, I think that's good. Now I'm gonna make a lighter pink also and do some of the highlights on here. Brighten them up a little bit. Just really make them pop. Okay, like that. Now I'm gonna come back with this lighter pink and just do a few little hints so I feel like this one is feeling a little less dimensional because it's missing that lightest color. That lightest value here. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so now we're gonna come back to the leaves. So the flowers are getting pretty developed now. bring in some blue into the leaves. I think that would be fun. I'm gonna do, I already have ultramarine, so I'm, let's just try ultramarine. We're gonna mix some ultramarine with some white. Just create a fun blue color and kind of add some more unexpected colors into the leaves. And chrysanthemum leaves also kind of have a vein, so I might introduce that sort of idea here. And okay, so I just kind of like what, what happened there. Um, so like I said, their leaves are more, a little bit more of a zigzaggy edge. 
So if I use a stroke and kind of go beyond the edge of the leaf a little bit, you can kind of hint at that zigzag, but still keep it more subtle like that. Okay, I'm just gonna use this to sort of create some fun highlights. Now this is, I think this shape is too big to be all one leaf. I don't really like um, how huge that is. I think I'm gonna try maybe making it into two leaves and we'll probably need to just add a darker sort of shadow value to separate them. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna bring this color, this periwinkle, just around a few more places to help it feel all cohesive and tied together. Because this is such a small canvas, I don't really want one corner to be a, a hugely different than the other corners. That's just a personal preference of mine, but I like how unified it can be and how um, by using the same using the same color all the way around the canvas. I'm going to bring in a darker blue now. I like how it's playing off of the warmer greens, having a cooler sort of a blue. So I'm going to use this ultramarine and maybe I'll put a little bit of phthalo. Let's try that. Now I know from past experience when you put ultramarine over yellows or like yellow greens, it can turn into kind of an icky brown kind of a color. It, they, they neutralize each other because ultramarine is such a cool blue and yellows are such a warm color that overlapping the two can um, kind of create a neutral as you're mixing them. So just keep that in mind that that might happen if you try to overlap them a lot. Okay, I'm just gonna kinda go over this corner a bit and then I'll rework that leaf. just finding little places to put hints of it. No real rhyme or reason, just little empty spots that look like they could use a bit more development. So you can find some places in your painting that you want to spread them around. There. Yeah. I think it was just, I'm looking for areas maybe that of this background texture that just look a little undeveloped, like they didn't get as much love as some other areas. I'm just gonna go over this all the way and then I'll bring my periwinkle back in. This lighter blue. The paint is still kind of wet, so they're mixing a bit. It's getting a little fuzzy over there. So I think I'm gonna blow dry. And then I'm gonna do just a few textural strokes with my Catalyst Wedge and another color over top to get a bit more depth into everything. And then we'll put on our finishing touches. Okay, so I love adding some transparent layers of color to kind of add some unexpected texture and depth. And one of my very all-time favorite colors is green gold. So it's golden brand. It's a very transparent color. So I just put out a little bit. It's fluid paint. And I'm gonna use my Catalyst Wedge and just dip the edge in the green gold, just get a little bit on there. Then I just scrape it over my colors. And right now I'm just letting whatever happens happen and just slowly start layering it up and I can scrape, whoop, <laughs> I can pull and kind of press and get it to go more sheerly like that. Or I can use a lighter touch 
and just really try to touch the top bumpy, um, like the highest points in the texture on the canvas. And for some reason, this color just, I love how it transforms other colors that it layers over. So this may seem very counterintuitive that we got a beautiful pink flower and now we're putting green on it. Why are we putting green? But <laughs> I like how it adds more unexpected texture and color to the painting. That's just something that I love. So if you want to do this step, you can do it along with me. I'm gonna do it over some of these greens in the back. Whoa, greens in the background and blues. And whenever I do this sort of thing, when I layer this layer, <laughs> layer other unexpected colors, really, um, I have to just sort of let go and say whatever happens, happens. It's going to add interest and unexpected things to my painting, and then it gives me something new to react to. And that is the exciting part of painting for me. Knowing exactly what's going to happen at every step is not as exciting for me. I love, as I've matured in my painting practice, I've, I've really deepened in my love of discovering unexpected things. And so that is, I think, why I love this so much. All right, so we have thoroughly texturized our painting and I I love like look at look at some of the fun stuff that's going on there I'm gonna blow dry this and then I think I'm also going to do a bit of turquoise too just a little bit okay here we go okay so now I have golden's fluid teal and I'm gonna try to be pretty sparing with this I don't want to go over the painting quite as much as I did with the green gold I'm just gonna do a little bit and I think I'm gonna focus I'm gonna focus on the leaves just add some little abstract marks I really like um, how kind of laid back and um, suggested the leaves are. They're not as clearly defined as when I first painted them. And I like how they're kind of getting more mysterious and kind of pushed into the background. So I'm not going to try to develop them too much further. I really like what's going on. I might bring just a teeny bit of it into the flower to tie things together. And whoops, a lighter color like this, like this is a more opaque fluid color. And so it really shows up on the ridges, like if I hold it up, you see how it hits the ridges in the canvas like that? I find that very fun. So I like kind of trying to drag it really lightly to see where I can find those bits of texture, those bits of raised texture, and then it can just kind of hit those and create a fun little highlight. Okay, I don't wanna go, I told myself I didn't want to go too far, so I'm going to stop. <laughs> Let's stop, and we're going to hit it with the blow dryer again, because each time I add a new layer, I like to make sure it's completely set and dry, because the effects I like to do depend on the colors not really physically mixing. They start visually mixing by layering, but they don't physically blend and get all muddy together. Um, keeping them separate in separate dry layers helps your painting stay brighter and crisper. Okay, so I have one final transparent, although I'm not sure how transparent it is. I think it is. <laughs> uh, it's a fluid color. It's, yeah, it is transparency. You can see the stripes through it pretty easily. This is called Indian Yellow Hue. And 
I discovered recently that I love how this yellow orange sort of shade looks when I drag it over pink. It really creates a vibrant kind of golden orange. And I think it would be really fun to add more of an orange, like a fall tone into the chrysanthemums. And so let's try it and see. Ooh, see? And maybe I'll just use this sparingly as well. We're gonna transform some of these pinks into more autumn sort of colors. Ooh, look at that. That's fun. And then I always like to come back after I've done these really thin, thin layers and kind of reestablish some of the lightest highlights and everything because we're kind of losing some of our contrast and our value range that we got in the beginning of the painting, but I like having those lighter values to scrape over because it creates a really bright light base for these really transparent colors to, um, to play off of, because you see through the transparent color to that lighter color underneath. So if I stroked a transparent color over a dark base, the effect would be very different and you wouldn't get as much of a luminous sort of color. Okay, we're going for autumn here, guys. <laughs> I like it. All right, so now I'm gonna clean off my wedge a little bit. And I just sort of wipe it along a paper towel like this. Okay, I'm gonna hit it with the blow dryer again and then we'll do our highlights. Okay, so I've got some white, I've got my magenta. Let's add back in some of our light pink. Magenta is also a really, a really strong color, so you want to make sure to add it a little bit at a time when you're trying to get a light shade of pink. I think I want to go a little lighter than that, so I'll just mix in the rest of the white. Okay. So I have to think about which ones. I'm gonna start down here and just sort of add that other little pop right there. And some of them, I like to leave the texture and some of them emphasize again. So because if I go too far um, putting my highlights back in, I'm gonna lose a lot of that fun layering. So I'm just going to kind of pick and choose. Okay, and then we're going to come up to this bud. Just do the same thing, just real lightly. I think because it's um, more of a background element, this is the foreground, the focal point flower. This is a background flower. I'm going to maybe let it kind of fade into the background more, so not add highlights to as much of it. So let's try and see what that looks like. Maybe this front, this front edge, we can emphasize more. 
Yeah, I kind of like I kind of like just leaving it like that. Maybe the highlight can come down one of them a little bit more there. There. And then the one petal that was there, I liked how they kind of defined the outer edge. There. Maybe one like right there. Okay. So now the flowers are looking very lovely and autumnal. I like that word. I just keep using it. <laughs> I think I want something a little bit more autumn in the background. So maybe I'll use, I'll come back with my yellow ochre. Well, I've got some on my palette. It was, it was it has some green in it, but let's see what it turns into. That, I feel like that's pretty similar to what's in the flowers, but I'm going to just lightly use it for just a pop a pop of warmth. Kind of pour, pull some of those warm tones into the background. Yeah, I like that. Okay. I think because um, the last thing I'm going to do is just do a bit more of the periwinkle in the background because the flowers have a yellow sort of tone, like an orangey yellow, and yellow's complementary color is purple. And so if I have yellow in a painting, I often like to work in a little bit of a purpley color so that... They can kind of play off of each other. So I'm going to use some magenta to deepen the purple side of this periwinkle. I think I need some more blue. I used up my blue. Just a little bit. Ooh, I like this. Okay, I, th I think this is going to be fun. So this will... I think this will be our finishing touch. Just add just a few little pops of a deep purple into the background. And right up against the yellow ochre, it really, like the colors kind of vibrate together. I like that a lot. I'm just gonna try to go subtle, not overwhelm. Just a little bit here and there. There, I like that. Okay. I think we are done. Thank you so much for following along with me and for painting along if you got out your paints. I will see you next time. Bye for now.